Kaz is on the way to the holodeck to visit the Paris Misogyny pub. When she gets there, the place is dark and quiet, and at this point I realise two things. One, it's a surprise birthday party, and two, surprise birthday parties for species who are not familiar with the custom must be fucking terrifying. You're blinded by light, then a load of people jump out and scream at you. Bollocks to that. The party gets underway, with the doc making a surprise appearance tending the bar, and gifts are given. Paris highlights how replicator expensive his was, because Tom Paris is a dick, and Neelix battles to control his jealousy, because Neelix is a possessive arse. Up on the bridge, we spot a swirly slash wibbly, it's a bit of both. Tuvok tries to call Janeway on the holodeck, but the communication goes a bit fucky, and Janeway cancels the party. The swirly slash wibbly is going to hit them in ten minutes. Oh, and it's surrounded them now by, quote, forming a ring. And because up and down do not exist in space, Tuvok decides to go through it. This doesn't work, and he sends Kim to fetch the captain to fix what he's just fucked up. On the way, Kim meets Lieutenant Bastard, who we last saw being a dick to the Doctor in Season 1, Episode 7, because it seems I'm destined to keep track of this shit now. As we're descending into pedantry, it would be remiss of me not to point out that he's changed uniform colours too, which a wiki tells me means he's moved from command to the rather nebulous term of operations. Lieutenant Bastard says he was in the gym when a load of systems went screwy, which is a nice callback as he was in the gym when he injured himself before, though I do wonder why he was exercising in his uniform. Kim tells him about the swirly slash wibbly, and Lieutenant Bastard says he'd report for duty and round up his security team, so I guess that answers the uniform question. Maybe because he's in command of a security team, he gets to choose what colour uniform he can wear each day. I wonder if this means that captains can wear whatever colour they want. Meanwhile, Janeway, Chakotay and Paris are in a lift on their way to the bridge. Or not, it seems, as they're deposited on deck four. Maybe the system fuckies are affecting voice commands. While they deal with that, Kez and Neelix are talking about the party on the way to her quarters, with Neelix struggling to control his jealousy about that gift, and hey, at least he's making an effort. Slight problem, though. Her quarters aren't where they should be. They aren't the only ones having problems, though, as Bellana's lost the entire engineering department. Not to worry, because Janeway finds it, instead of the bridge. This is getting worse than trying to navigate an Ikea. Balana's still having issues and ends up in a teleporter room. We meet Lieutenant Bastard again, and it turns out his name is Baxter. Not to me, though. Lieutenant Bastard is lost too, he says. Then they split up, which seems like a poor choice to me, given the ongoing fuckies, but I'm not Academy trained, so you do you. The dog's having trouble getting out of the holodeck as well, we discover, but there are some benefits to him being trapped. Kim turns up to fetch the captain, and the doc convinces him to take a look at the controls so he can get back to sickbay. As he's having a poke around, Bellana turns up. As do Kez and Neelix. As do Janeway, Chicote, and Paris, and at this point they may as well just have that party they're cancelled. Perhaps taking this idea to heart, they pop into the holodeck and have a chat about their respective experiences. They each have different ideas on how to get where they want to be, one of which is using the teleporters, and I just want to say that's a bloody awful plan and they set off in several different directions. Through the power of elevator roulette, Bellana and Paris manage to end up back in engineering. It's not all good news, though, as one of the doors from engineering now seems to lead to the quarters of a dude in his undercrackers, which is clearly not ideal. Meanwhile, Chicote and Neelix are scanning around some corridors. Neelix takes this opportunity to suggest Chicote is a gigolo and ask him about jealousy. They nearly get into a deeper discussion about the fear of loss, and Neelix seems to understand that how he acts is problematic, then the whole thing is broken up by Lieutenant Bastard. The moment ruined, they set off again only to bump into Duvok, who left some schmuck in charge of the bridge, rather than sending them to explore instead. While he and Chicote chat, Neelix wanders off. In the guts of the ship, Janeway and Kim are trying to crawl to the bridge, with limited success. On a tangent here, if you're going to make these ducts into crawl spaces, you could at least have padded the floors. Janeway picks up some electromagnetic oddness, then, seemingly out of the blue, compliments Kim on his performance. She doesn't specify any actual event, which says quite a lot to me, but he's happy anyway, so we'll let him have this win. Kim says that the bridge is on the other side of a door that's mysteriously closed when the other ones in that ducting weren't. Janeway pulls it open and nearly gets sucked into a weird wobbly something. Kim pulls her back, but then she has a bit of a nap. Back in the holodeck, the doc is having a messy breakup with his lover slash bartending boss, who fires him from both of those positions. They're interrupted by Kim dragging Janeway. 
Meanwhile, Tuvok and Chakotay are walking along some more fucking corridors. They have a disagreement about the best way to reach the bridge, then split up. Briefly, anyway. In engineering, Bellana and Paris are still going through with that bloody awful plan to teleport to the bridge. They end up on the holodeck, which, considering space itself is a bit fucky right now, is a significantly better result than they had any right to expect. On the plus side, Kim says all that scanning has given us enough data to take a look at the current configuration of the ship. The answer to how it looks right now is, a little bit fucked. It seems only the part they're in now is unaffected, but the swirly slash wibbly will crush them in 68 minutes, and I guess we're just ignoring the fact that, if the effect of the ring is dangerous, everybody not in that section is already dead. Anyhow, they all go back to the pub to figure out their next move. Balana thinks she can rig a science thingy that'll make the swirly slash wibbly go kaboom without kabooming the ship. Tuvok thinks that might not be the best course of action and that trying to move the ship would be more sensible, but Chakotay tells him to shut the fuck up. Normally I'd be on Tuvok's side here, but he's the one that originally tried ramming the damn thing, so Chakotay does have a point. As an aside, this is the second time this episode there's been friction between the two. Whilst Starfleet marquee tension is something I asked for previously, the choice of these two arguing over what Janeway would have wanted makes it feel more like two teenage boys fighting over which one of them a girl fancies, and rather spoils the effect. In engineering, Bellana and Kim are overloading the warp core for that science thingy. They leg it, and the science thingy goes off. The ship doesn't blow up, but it doesn't fix anything either. In fact, it's made things worse, because now both engineering and the holodeck are affected by the weird wobbly something. With all options depleted, Tuvok suggests the solution is surrender. We wait for the swirly slash wibbly to eat us and see what happens. After all, there's no definitive proof that it'll kill them, and I'd like to point out once again that if it is fatal, they're fucked anyway as the rest of the crew is already dead. I'd also like to point out that the logical choice here would be for one of them to volunteer to enter the swirly slash wibbly while the others scan them to gather data while they still have a chance. None of them care what I think though, so let's sit down and wait. Everybody makes their peace with death while complimenting each other, which makes for an oddly maudlin kind of circle jerk, but the doc shows some genuine compassion towards Kez, so it was worth it just for that. Oh, and Tuvok places his hand next to Janeway, which is perhaps the most subtle interaction I've seen on the show so far, and was perfectly played. The swirly slash wibbly engulfs them, and then everybody's fine and Janeway wakes up. She says it wasn't a natural anomaly, but an attempt at communication. Oh, and while the swirly slash wibbly was there, it shat a load of data into their computer, so that's nice. On a personal note here, I can see why some people might find the conclusion unsatisfying, and I'd normally decry this sort of deus ex machina end to a story, but you know what? It actually makes sense for Starfleet to sometimes come across things they can't understand or science away. Maybe this plays into that desire I mentioned before to see characters be humbled every now and again. But again, I digress. The mood on the bridge is one of shared wonder and relief, maybe mixed with some small affinity at finding another race that just wants to exchange knowledge. Then Neelix turns up with cake to spoil it, and we fly away. End of episode.